Good morning. Welcome to the Sentinel Newsroom. I'm Editor Bill Wilson. Our guest today is Rochester Mayor Mark Smiley. Mr. Smiley's been in office for a little over a year and a half now and was kind enough to share part of his morning today with Sentinel readers. Without further ado, here at the Sentinel we've received a couple of inquiries about your personal residence, Mayor. I take it you're remodeling your lake home and living out of town until that's done? Well, you know, I have several houses. I, I have um, a rental business here in Rochester, Indiana. My residence is on 3227 Barrett Road. I own the house next door to it. I have already tore the house next door down to the ground, and I plan on tearing my residence down. I still have belongings in my house. I am staying in one of my uh, places right outside on uh, 3887 Fort Wayne Road, which is probably going to be an annex in the city soon, be one of these days, but it's not right now. My, my intent to the law is to, I'm not leaving the lake. I do stay in another residence right now, and I have my personal belongings in my lake house. I am going to plan on tearing it down soon. And one thing with being the mayor, you know, it's just, uh, it takes a lot of your time, and we are working on it, and I plan to be back there. It's going to be, I figure, about a two-year project by the time I get my house down, put up, and move back in, and maybe sooner. I, if it became a problem, I could live in any one of my houses in the city. I, you know, I have 25 houses and apartments in the city that I could uh, move into. I just feel that it's nice to where I'm at because it's close to the lake and also is where my shop is, so it's going to be a good uh, fix when I build my house, and I plan on doing it shortly. And you had the city attorney check into that. This is all kosher? I uh, did this uh, way before I even talked to my city attorney. I do a lot of networking with the Indiana Associated City Towns. And that's an organization in Indianapolis, and I actually was going to do this when I was campaigning. But I put it off a year because I didn't feel like I needed that hassle of people talking this and that. Legally, um, Indiana Association and Towns uh, said there's no problem doing that. And then I told Greg Heller, my city attorney, what I was going to do, and then he checked it into it, and, it is, and he said, is your intent to move back into the city? And it is. And like if it if it ever became a problem, I would I would move into my rail houses. But I don't want to do that. Are you satisfied with the way the traffic lights work downtown? The crossroad lights seem slow. Are you aware of any other town in the in the area that has to have signs up at traffic signals saying stop here to activate traffic signals? Why is that necessary? Well, actually, it's necessary because there are sensors in the street. Where they say to stop, those are actually sensors right there under the pavement. You'll see those cutout lines, and if you don't stop there, they can't sense there's a vehicle there. As far as, I've seen them in the cities too, you just don't have signs there saying stop, because in some of the cities, like when you're driving down Indianapolis on 31, you can see them if you're looking there, but there's enough traffic there that they're scattered up back to back so you don't have any problems sitting on that exact sensor spot. Here in Rochester, if there's one car, if you're pulled up too far or back, you won't hit that sensor, so you might have to wait for a long time. I think it's more of a courtesy deal for Rochester than anything else. Signs for Bessemore Park Road have been misspelled for about the last 10 years. Are you really? going to change that? Is that right? I didn't know that. You might check that I out. I might there. check that out. That's, uh, you know, that's what's nice about it, uh, while you're saying that. The mayor or anybody else doesn't know anything. Well, we know what's going on, but we don't see what individuals like you see. So when you bring it to our attention, I like that because that way we can follow up on it and we don't know unless somebody brings it to our attention. Speaking of signs, Mayor, downtown Rochester has a lot of parking signs that must have been there for generations. Is there even a parking ordinance? Do those signs mean anything? And is that on the city administration or city council's uh, agenda to do something about it? Um, yes and no to that question. Uh, you have the signs there, do they mean anything? I think, in my own opinion, when we took out the parking meters, gee, I don't know if you were around here, but I remember the parking meters downtown. They took those out and they put those signs up. They do not comply with the ordinance that we have. We do not have a two-hour parking ordinance. We did, we did uh, enact a new ordinance for parking just this past uh, few months ago about uh, tenants and 
employees parking in front of businesses. We do have a parking ordinance on Main Street during the evening and morning hours, which would be 2 to, I think it's 5 o'clock. You cannot park there for snow removal and sweeping. So that ordinance has been in effect for I don't know how long. It's been a long time. But it really is not enforced unless we have to have snow removal and then we can ticket and tow cars. And it's also the street sweeping. We don't really do a whole lot of that in the morning, but there is an ordinance for that. So the signs do need to be replaced. That is on the agenda, but we just haven't got to that point yet because it was just brought up that when this parking issue started about a downtown merchant, then we started looking into this, and that's when we found out that the signs really don't even match the ordinance. So there's no plan to take down the signs that don't mean anything? We, yes, there is a plan. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Are you aware of any new uh, employers coming to Rochester? Um, I'm not aware of any at the present time. I know Shane Blair, we're, uh, right now, is, um, the whole United States is uh, wanting employment. You know, um, Hopefully, um, things are going to start picking up. I just heard on the news coming in here that uh, the national unemployment rate went down one-tenth. I believe it went from one nine point nine and a half to nine four. 0.94 percent. So that's a that's a good thing. I don't know any new employers coming to town right at the moment. I got a political question for you. Your father was a prominent Democrat. At least one local Democrat told me that he read you up and down the ladder for running as a Democrat or for as a Republican instead of a Democrat. So my question is two parts. I'm, are you at the taproot of your being a Republican or a Democrat? Well, to answer that question, um, unfortunately, my father has been deceased when I decided to run. And to back up that, my father was actually probably the one of the few smileys that was really a Republican. <laughs> and that's why I'm a Republican. So sometimes rumors in small towns uh, are brought about, but the fact is my father was a Republican. Most of the smileys are a Democrat. And I would say on the other end of it, I look at it that uh, on the local levels, the politics are a lot less looked at than on the state and the it's national. It's more personal. Right? It's more personal. I look at it now being in office, I don't look at it that I'm a Republican or a Democrat. I look at it that I'm an independent mayor. And I like to do what's best for the people. You know, I don't like the, the one thing I do not do, I don't look into being the good old boy club. I look at what's best for the people. Three biggest lessons you have learned since being mayor. The first big lesson is that as an entrepreneur and working for myself, when I want to make a decision, I can make a decision. Being in city government as a mayor, I cannot do that. That's, that's the biggest lesson that you have to get all the elected officials together to go with uh, what is going to be voted on. That, that's, that's the biggest thing that's the, the challenge with being an entrepreneur and moving into city government. It's a wonder how anything ever moves. It just took us four and a half months to get the Council of Aging passed to get the county together and the city together since we had to do the uh, inner uh, the lease. And the same thing with the interlocal agreement with the building inspector. You know, I, I would have done that in January. It took me eight months to get that passed through the city council. It was in the budget, so some of the council members wanted to leave it in there since it was already budgeted. Well, in eight months, that cost the city $50,000. We could have put in the sidewalks or a green area instead of having two different departments inspecting the same thing for twice the money. The other thing I've learned that it's very important that I do a lot of networking outside the box or outside of Rochester, Indiana with the city mayors throughout the state. I personally have met 105 out of 120 mayors. I attend the Mayor's Institutes and I feel uh, they have three or four of those a year at IU, at the um, SPIA, which is Schools of Public Environmental Affairs. So I, I participate on this and I feel that it's helped me a lot to um, program yourself to come back and be motivated and take other ideas and talk and discuss with the other mayors. And we have maybe